Hey guys, it's Tim McCamus. Uh, we're out here in the shop this evening, going to expand on our fabrication welding videos. We've been running a series on those and we're going to keep going um, with some different material. So we went through some 4130, some tips and tricks and what to do and what not to do. Um, tonight I want to talk to you about doing some stainless. We're going to do a little uh, stainless tubing because um, everybody's going to have to build a set of headers or you're going to have to modify a set of headers or you're going to need to do some turbo piping or there's there's lots of different reasons that you need to be comfortable with stainless um, so i've got some uh, some scrap tubing that i pulled out of the back uh, just to show you a couple of tips but uh, before we get started i want to circle back around to uh, to these cups uh, maybe three videos ago i i talked to you about these these large uh, shielded cups that we use i didn't really spend much time on it so i want to talk to you about these you know i told you we we started out with the pyrex cups which are kind of a they look like glass you know and we had uh, problems with laying them on the table or touching something and they would break so these ceramic uh ones are are a really a lot better a lot more durable for us and we really like the use of them but um, we get these from a guy out in mooresville north carolina his name's michael furick furick or furick it's f-u-r-i-c-k his company's called dog fabrication but um, he's, the, he's our supplier for these cups, and he has a lot of different varieties, a lot of different uh, uh, setups that fit different torch heads. Uh, you can easily find him on the web. I know he's on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere else, but um, he's uh, is an awesome supply for these. I mean, that's where we get them from, and if you guys want the, the same type of equipment that we use, then you should probably try to give him a, give him a shout or send him a message on... Uh, Instagram or however you want to communicate, but um, he's the guy that's got this stuff, and it is, it's is—it's—it's not expensive, and it, I'm telling you, it will make you a much better welder. If you, if you have any skill at all with a TIG welder, adding this cup to your accessories will make you extremely good, and you will see right away how much better that, getting that extra shielding over the weld will make your weld quality. So I just wanted to talk to you about that. So. So give him a shout, contact him on his website, um, look at what he has, but he, he's got some really nice stuff. He, you can still get the Pyrex stuff. They've actually got a little band around them now that keeps them uh, protected a little better, like a little uh, stainless band that, that captures the, this part of the cup. But like I said, we really like these, uh, these ceramic ones and, and uh, we use them on all our welders here and they just work perfect. So uh, getting back to what we're talking about tonight. So I've got some, um, some stainless tubes here and a uh, couple things you can see I've got these taped up on the ends here so I've got some two and a half and some two and three eighths two and a half is a common size for us for building a either a zoomy or a collector header for a large cubic inch engine um, but we're gonna purge weld this stuff so stainless is gonna like to be purge welded a stainless tubing will to keep the um, the weld quality nice and to keep the burn through from the in, in the inside of the tube so if you just weld this without purging it, when you look inside, you're going to see a lot of heat in there and you're going to see a lot of burn through and a lot of buildup of weld, but the purging will, will fix all that. So what I mean by purge welding is we're still going to use our same torch and our same shielding gas, but we're going to have another supply line. So what we've done is we've just, uh, a couple of our welders here, we've just got a, uh, a Y fitting at the uh, regulator and one of the legs of the Y has a knob to turn it on and off. So when we start welding, we want to fill the inside of this tube with argon also. So when I put this together, I can slip fit this or I can butt fit this together, which I'm going to start by just butting this together and putting a couple little tacks on there. And then I'll, um, I'll turn on the uh, extra argon inside here and, and actually weld this while I'm purging uh, argon inside the tube. So anytime somebody talks about purge welding, that's what they're, that's what they're describing there. So um, a couple of tips here, stainless, especially thin wall header tubing, um, you want to have a nice fit. Uh, you want to have a nice tight fit. Gaps are weldable, but they're just not going to produce the same quality and the same look. So you want to have just a zero fit if at all possible. So I just squared these up on our uh, disc sander and, and uh, knocked the edge off of them. And I also uh, cleaned up any excess material from the inside. So when you cut these tubes, um, there's gonna be a little flashing on the inside from, from the kerf cut. Uh, you'll have a little bit of a burr or some extra material in there. You wanna clean that all out. Just take that and zip it with a, um, a drum sander 
uh, wire wheel, anything that it will clean it up. So you can see this is all nice and clean. And another thing that I did too is I cleaned the inside of this tube with uh, acetone. And you only have to clean it right where you're going to weld, but most of the time this tubing is going to have uh, oil inside of it. It's going to, because when the mandrel bend this, they're going to pull a mandrel through there that's covered in oil and grease. And that stuff remains on the inside of that tube. And when you go to weld that, that will all get in your weld and contaminate it. So I straightened these up, knocked the burr off of them, cleaned that extra flashing off the inside, took some acetone on a rag, cleaned this on the inside, I also cleaned it on the outside because the stainless, you can't have it clean enough. It needs to be nice and clean when you weld it. So I'm going to uh, tack these together and then I'm going to run some little sharp welds and then I'll, uh, I'll actually uh, run one without purging it too and I'll show you how that, uh, that burn through gets inside the tube. Then I'll also slip weld this together. So any, when you do like a step header, so um, a lot of the headers we build are stepped from a smaller size to a bigger size. They might go two and three eighths, two and a half, two and five eighths out to the collector. When you step that, these will slip fit inside each other. So you just want to slip them in about an eighth of an inch and that'll give you a nice little corner weld to put on there. So when you're doing all the same size and you're fitting a, uh, like a bend into another tube, you're going to have a butt fit like this and you're going to want it nice and straight and clean. Okay, so you can see I've got, I went ahead and tacked this together without purging it just because it's a little easier to hold it without the argon running there. But you can see the, my tape is kind of bulged out here on the end. So I've got a good flow of argon in there. I just cracked that valve, but you can see I've got some, that, that tube is full of argon. And then I've got my shielding argon here. So I'm just gonna weld a little segment here. Okay, so that's what I look like there. You can see I've got a nice uh, color. There's really no heat in that tube. And so I'm gonna roll that around and continue that bead on around this tube a little farther. And then I'm gonna take the uh, purge off of it and show you what that looks like. So. I'm going to now, I'm going to take that, you can see where I started here, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take the, the uh, tape off of here and turn off the argon, and then show you the difference between um, the purge and, and no purge, so. All right, so now I'm, I'm just welding the tube uh, normally with no purge, and then I'll, I'm hoping we can look down inside there and I'll be able to show you what the difference is in the weld, so I'm going to put a little inch and a half bead on here. I want you to notice the difference in the, the flatness of that weld, how flat it is versus this one here that is standing up and it's got a little bit. Now I welded them with the same heat. I'm going to show you down inside this tube. This side here, this bottom side, is where we had the purge and you can see hardly any burn through and the color is almost exactly the same as the tube. And then if I turn it over, so now look down inside there and you can see how dark the inside of that is and how much weld has burned through there. That's the difference between purging it and not. So over here, you can see that there's, there's hardly any discoloration and there's a nice little clean weld bead inside there. But on this side, then you're gonna see a lot of burn through and a lot of weld on the inside and a lot, and that's gonna make a, um, make a ridge in that tube. And obviously this is an exhaust header, so we don't want any ridges in there. We want it to be as smooth as possible going out. So that's the difference between purge welding it and not. And um, 
it really makes a big difference. And it'll also the longevity of the, the uh, weld will be better too. The, the purged weld will have much more stability. It's not gonna wanna crack right there. You can see how flat this is and how much more color it's got in it just because we didn't have the argon on the inside filling up the tube. So again, um, I can put this back on. I'm gonna slip this other tube in here. Okay, so I've just uh, I've slipped this tube in inside the two and a half. So I got two and three eighths slipped in there and I've got this end capped off. You can see I got a little pressure here, but I've obviously got some leaks around here because uh, of the slip fit. So um, I've got argon in there but I'm getting some leaks around this slip, so that's fine. We're gonna, we're gonna lose a little argon, but I'm gonna put a little short weld on here, and then I'll have you look down the inside of that tube also. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see that weld's got good color to it. If you heard that little hiccup at the end there, that's where I, I dip my tungsten um, in the puddle, which is going to happen. I mean, no matter how much you weld, you're going to dip your tungsten every once in a while. Didn't really do it bad, but um, you can see how it discolored the end of the tungsten just a little bit. That was what I was talking about earlier, where I don't want to continue welding with this now. I want to go ahead and replace it. I've got some other tungsten over here, but once it, you dip it, it gets a little contamination on there. It's not going to be stable on the arc, and it's going to be uh, it's not going to produce a good quality weld. So uh, again, I'll, I'll knock that out of there, but uh, right at the end, um, I dipped it when I was coming over the, the edge there. You can't see it. It didn't hurt it any, but I'm gonna, I would want to start on that and continue on. But I'm going to go ahead and uncover this, and hopefully we can look down in there. So. I hope you can see down in there, um, the weld is, the weld's right here, but you can see on that tube down in there, um, you probably can't even see the weld because it didn't burn through at all. It, um, it's just got a little, you can tell there's plenty of penetration, but because I was purge welding it, I got a nice uh, finish on the inside. That looks really good. I mean, it looks, it looks good on the outside. That's a, that's a nice width on the weld and it's good penetration, but it didn't burn through on the inside and you almost can't tell that there's even a weld in there. And if you look down past it just a little farther, you'll see that other weld where I butted it, where it's sticking up. That's what you'll have inside of all your header tubes if you don't purge weld it. And the reason we do purge weld that is to keep that nice and smooth on the inside and give us a, a nice clean finish for the exhaust gas to flow out. So again, that's just a couple little tips um, that uh, we use. And this, you know, you can see this isn't anything fancy here. We just made a little piece in the lathe and this, this has probably been here for, we've probably had this for 25 years. And you can see the edges are all beat off of it. It used to have a nicer step on it, but um, it's just got a little piece of clear hose on it. We've used this over and over and over and we've even got some kind of splitters made up when you, if you're welding two tubes, you can, you can Y this off and put this on here and use it on two different tubes. This one hasn't been beat up quite as bad. Real simple to make. It's just quarter inch pipe in the center and, and nothing, to, nothing to make it up. But um, that is, uh, that's how you want to set that up when you're welding stainless tubing. So uh, again, just a couple little quick uh, tips on how to do that. The, the fitting is very important. You want to have a nice fit, uh, spend the time to, to, to go the extra mile to make the fit as perfect as you can make it because a little gap is really going to be hard. When you come around here and if you've got some gap, you're not going to be able to help but get filler rod down in there. And even though you're purge welding it, you're still going to have some intrusion on the inside of the tube, which is what we don't want. We want this thing to be as smooth as possible on the inside. So try to if you get too big of a gap just throw the piece away and get another piece and fit it right so um, again that's what i got uh, check out michael's cups they're really nice i think you guys will be very happy with those um, try this get a couple scrap pieces test it out rig up this simple little uh, purge hose and you'll be good to go so thanks a lot for watching